Hello. 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 All having a good time? I only just got here, so I haven't even, my tent's over there still, so. Um, hello, my name's Matthew Somerville, and I'm talking about buying multiple train tickets uh, and how you can save quite a bit of money. So if you don't know, I run a website uh, called traintimes.org.uk that takes the data from the official website and uh, displays it with much less gumph. Uh, and it has nice URLs like this, and it has nice date handling, and it's all very pretty. And if you need to look up train times in the UK, I recommend you use this and bookmark it. And uh, I've got a whole page of bookmarks in my phone for, for looking them up. Um, it's got some other bits and pieces on it, like a, a live map of the London Underground, uh, which shows where all the tube trains are on the London Underground in sort of real time. Um, which somebody said was possibly the coolest use of the internet. Um, and I, I'm not going to disagree, although it's clearly not. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm not talking about looking at things, I'm talking about the strange vagaries of the train ticketing system. So we're going to go with an example journey, which is a train from Bath Spa to Birmingham New Street. Um, you're going for the day, it's a work trip. Um, you're leaving around 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's the URL to look at that journey to find out what time it is. And if you do that, you'll find that you catch the train at 7.59 from Bath Spa, which gets into Bristol at quarter past eight. And then you have a 10 minute or so wait changeover at Bristol, and you catch the train to Birmingham, uh, which leaves at half eight, gets into Birmingham at five to 10, and calls at Bristol and Cheltenham on the way. This is fascinating, bear with me. If you went to the station and asked for a ticket for that train, uh, on the day, in the morning, you haven't booked in advance or anything, it would cost you £109, which is quite a lot of money, really. Um, although, if you worked paying, it's all right. But uh, even then, you want to save your, your work money if you can. Or, uh, so um, there's an alternative. So note the, um, note the time of the train leaving Bristol is at half eight, and note that the train calls at Bristol and Cheltenham. So let's try this journey a different way. So... We buy a ticket from Bath to Bristol, which costs £8.20 for a day return. We buy a ticket from Bristol to Cheltenham, which costs £8.80 as long as you're leaving after 8.29 in the morning. So, so that's good, because we're leaving at half eight. And you buy a ticket from Cheltenham to Birmingham, which costs £36.50 for an any time return. And I don't know if anyone can do the ads quite quickly, but um, that's only £53.50. Um, and so that's exactly the same trains, exactly the same journey, with exactly the same validity. You don't have to buy the tickets in advance or any different. You just buy three train tickets instead of buying one train ticket, and it's half the price, uh, which shows you what a stupid system the UK national trains are. Um, so that you can get it even cheaper. If you don't have to go till half eight, then the Cheltenham to Birmingham ticket becomes an off-peak ticket. Uh, and you, then it's only £40 for the whole journey, although then you can't leave Birmingham between half three and quarter past six because train tickets are stupidly complicated. Here's an example of my colleague Ben buying all those tickets to come and visit me from Bath to Birmingham. Uh, they sold in the tickets. They have to sell you whatever tickets you ask for. So you just turn up and say, I'd like a ticket to Bristol and then a ticket from Bristol to Cheltenham and then a ticket from Cheltenham to Birmingham. And they'll go, here you are. That's £53 instead of £109. So it's, if you, there are some obvious places where you can always do this. So Cheltenham and Banbury are two well-known stations where if you buy tickets to them and then onwards, you can save money. But um, the train operating companies last year released all their data as uh, open data, which was great. And it meant that someone could potentially take all that data and make a website out of it where you just gave it the from and the to and the time. Uh, and it would calculate where to split your tickets for you. Um, so I did that. Uh, and it's at split.traintimes.org.uk. Uh, and that's the example journey there. Um, you, give it, you give it the time where you go, you can give it a return time too if you want optionally to help it look up maybe what train you're going to come back on as well. It has lots of caveats and anything it gives you, you should check yourself that it's going to be valid. Um, I don't guarantee its results are right in any way, although I use it whenever I'm traveling. Um, it doesn't do rail cards or travel cards or 
Vova cards or all sorts of special educators, but for normal turning up and catching chain, it, um, it works quite well. Um, I can do a live demo now if anybody has come from somewhere that it might work. So if anyone, where did, where did anyone come from? Preferably somewhere in the southwest of England. That would be good because I know that will work. Um, well, let's say, let's say you, sir, invisible man over there, came from Exeter. Well, that's good. So hopefully, this live demo, so you know it's going to go wrong. Oh, there we go. £115 down to 93 That's, uh, oh, so it's all the, the main price is an off-peak anyway. We weren't going early enough for a peak ticket. But even then, if you buy a ticket from Exeter to Bristol, a ticket from Bristol to Cheltenham, and then a ticket from Cheltenham to Bristol, you save 20 quid. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, tell everyone, tell all your friends... Uh, tell all your enemies. Um, does anyone have any questions? Why do we have such a oh, this is interesting. So when I looked at the open data, so the question was, why do we have such a stupid system? Um, so when I downloaded all the fares database from the train operating companies, it basically was the worst. It's a, t it's lo it's a lot of text files. Um, and it's basically, if you imagine a database that was invented in the early 70s, and then every time something has changed, they've just put some more stuff on top for 40 years. And that is basically what it is today. It's still the same system that they were using in the 70s, as far as I can make out, just with every possible variation of ticket. When, like when, they, um, when, they, when they simplified the tickets a few years ago to make them just any time off-peak, or advance. They didn't actually simplify the database in any way. They just renamed 18 types of ticket all to off-peak. In the database, there are still 18 types of ticket. They're just all called off-peak. So, um, so what, what the front end, it just says off-peak now, but the database still has 18 types of ticket all with their own restrictions or whatever. So yeah, uh, I think one day it's probably all going to collapse and I don't know what they're going to do then, but I, cause I'm not sure they know how it works anymore either. But yeah, it's a 40-year-old database, basically. Um, and that just means this sort of thing just has to happen because it's just, it's just so complicated. Uh, that has to, it has to stop somewhere. Yeah, sorry. So the important, the important thing I didn't say, thank you, um, the way this works, your train has to stop at the point place where you swap from one ticket to the other. So if there's no, if there's no stops between the two, then there's, there's nothing it can do. Um, but, and London is also very, London is harder to find ones generally from people who've tried this because they're, they're, London is so complicated itself with all its different stations and stuff. Um, and is, and they, 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 they have a lot of people coming in and out, so there aren't so many opportunities. They've, they, they play a lot around with the prices there to keep them to keep them like that. But um, so generally, it's longer journeys. I know some, um, someone went for a day trip from Manchester to Oxford, and it was £57 instead of £157, uh, and they bought six tickets to do that. Uh, I'll, hang on, I'll just bring that one up. Any other questions? I didn't, so I didn't, I didn't follow the, I didn't follow that. Um, it's not so much a question as a comment. Okay. Um, I know that there are some fairs that are more or less set by law, uh, that they can't change. Right. So they're going to have to find very interesting ways of changing everything except those ones that are set by law. Sure. Um, so these are all, well, generally, we'll try and find, they're all the same type it's finding. So there are regulated fares which can't go up by more than inflation um, by law, as you say. And this, the, the, the split ones are the same type of ticket as the main one. So they're all, like that, that Bath to Birmingham ticket, they're all regulated by law. They're all, it's, um, it's sort of all to do with like one company sets the small price and a different company sets the big price. 
and that company's put up the price quicker than the other company. Um, so like Cross Country and Virgin shot the price up of the long journeys, whereas the small journeys, because there were commuters involved, didn't go up so quickly, and that made the difference quite a lot, especially around Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, sometimes it, it doesn't do the unregulated fares, which the advanced ones, this doesn't look at them at all, only the, only the ones that you can turn up on the day. So, yeah, well, um, if you've got a normal rail card, then it will just be the same. You could just take a third off. Uh, if, you've got, if you've got the network rail card, which is the rail card for the southeast of England, then, yes, there are extra things you can do to, like, buy a ticket to the edge of the rail card boundary and then a new ticket for the southeast bit, but which, yes, it doesn't handle, but um, the rail card adds a whole extra level of complexity because it's... Um, it's, own, it's got its own database system of because the, the rail cards have their own exceptions and are just as complicated on top of the already complicated bits. Oh, there you go. There's a five ticket, a five ticket journey to save seventy pounds, eighty pounds. Oh, he, he definitely got it cheaper than that. But yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much.